Father, we just set aside all the things of our day, all the weightiness. We just glorify you in this place right now. We welcome the Lord of glory. Not in just name, God, but in reality, you are welcome in this place. Thank you. 
the King of all eternity. We worship the Lamb of God. Let heaven, let heaven come. Let heaven come. Come on, let's just ask him tonight. Let heaven come. Let
Let the blinded spite off of blinded eyes, God, and not just in the natural, but in the realm of the spirit. Yes, Let hearts be open. Let the enlightening of the word of God pierce through. God, let it pierce through, let it pierce through, let it pierce through. Father, we just thank you tonight that your word is true and that your presence is here with us because your word declares it will be. So we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of the Lord. And God, we ask you to give us clean hands and pure hearts. And give us ears to hear. And our hearts to receive what the Spirit of God is saying, even right now, to each of us in this place, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are we blessed tonight? Yes. 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 That song, Jesus, Savior, King, has just been on me for two days now. And, I, and then this other one, Let Heaven Come. And I know we have preconceived ideas and notions of what that may mean. But sometimes we need to take the lid off of what that is. Yes. Let heaven come in our home, in our family, in our lives, in our personal, in things that we've been struggling with and, and secrets and things. Let it come and set us free. Yes. How about it? Amen. Freedom be found not just in the lost and in the dying, but in us. Yes. Let the true freedom, even in, in, in let heaven come in power and might and dominion. Let heaven come in, in setting people free in, in healing in the authority of the Lord of glory. Yes. May it come. May he come in fullness and may he make himself known in this land. You know, because I believe we've got people... And churches all over excited about something we've not even been converted to. Think about that for a minute. We've got people in all across lands that are excited about <coughs> going to a church and never been even converted to the Lordship of Heaven. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say this and I'm not being critical, but I am stating the truth. We've got preachers preaching things we don't even believe. Mm -hmm. We've got preachers preaching something we've not even been converted to. You must be born again. It's got to start on the inside. Something's got to change. If change and it's not happened, you have not been born again. Right. Amen. Right. Come on. Right or wrong? Amen. I'm telling you, if, if, if that on the inside is not conforming to the image of Jesus, then you don't have the Spirit of God abiding in there. That's right. Amen. But it takes the Spirit of God abiding in there for there to be change. Yes. Just the way it works. You're not going to change if the agent of change is not in there. I mean, to take something carnal called called cancer, what is the job of cancer in a body? To take over that body, to mm -hmm. kill that body. Mm -hmm. That is its goal, is to take over and to consume it and to destroy it, right? right yes. Well, when Jesus comes down, his whole point is to take over, to consume it, and to bring life to every part of that body. Yes, it is. That no part of us be left dead. He wants to bring fullness of life and light, that there be no dark areas inside of us, and tonight, if you've got a Bible, flip over with me to Genesis chapter 8. And I'm going to go ahead and warn you. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. And some of you are going to sigh about it, but it'll be all right. I've got 20 verses. I don't mean verses. I mean different places. 20 to run through here. So get on your horse. Saddle up. Let's ride, huh? Genesis chapter 8. Jesus. I want to tell you tonight, we're going to get excited about Jesus. Amen. And gumbo. Come on, you're good. So, if somebody happens to be watching this tonight, we've all got candles here, and I encourage you to get you a candle for later in the service. We've got something we're going to do, and uh, I'll explain it in a minute, but I want everybody to have a part and be a, be a part if they want to. But we're going to Genesis chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 20. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 says, And Noah built a, what, what's that next word? Altar. Built an altar to the Lord. Do it, Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the, what's that word? Altar. altar. Now tell me, who's he talking to here? Who, who's, who's he talking to? Then Noah, what? To the Lord. Noah did what? Built an altar. Who did he build it to? The Lord. 
Noah. Tell me, who, who's building the altar again? Noah. 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 Has Abraham been yet? Has Abraham been around? Has a covenant been established? No. Has Moses been around yet? No. Has the law been enacted of sacrifices? No. The law is not in place yet, is it? But yet, what is Noah doing? He's building an altar. He's about to offer something up to God. Isn't he? Yes. Noah built an altar to the Lord. All right, look at Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, look at verse 7 and 8. Then the Lord appeared to Abram. All right, who are we talking to now? Abram. Abram, before he's Abraham. And said, to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. All right, look at uh, chapter 13, verse 18. Genesis 13, 18. Then Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the cherubim trees of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and did what? What did he do? Built an altar to the Lord. I want you to catch something. What are, what are these men of God doing? They're building an, an established, they're building something that others are going to see and know something happened. Yes. They're stacking some stones and everybody that comes by here later is going to know something took place here. Are you with me? Yes. Something's happening. Building an altar. Look at chapter 22. Genesis 22. And look at verse 9. 9. And they came to the place of which God had told him and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order and he bound up Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Alright, he's about to offer up his son, right? And we know the story after Brother Tim talked about it last week of how God provided the ram in the, in, the, in the bush there, right? In the type and shadow of what was coming with Jesus. Look at chapter 26. Genesis 26. I told y'all he was going to run through these. Y'all didn't believe me. Genesis 26, look at verse 25. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. And he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. What's happening? What are we building? An altar. Are we catching this? Look at chapter 33. Genesis 33. And then we're going to verse 20. Then he erected an altar there and he called it El Elohi Israel. I'm telling you, Jacob is erecting something. I want you to look at Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And look, look at verse 25. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build on it of hewn stone for him. If you use your tool on it, you have profaned it, nor shall you go by steps to the altar that your nakedness may not be exposed on it. What's he talking about here? Now we're getting over into the tabernacle that's being built and something that's happening, an establishment of future of what's about to take place. Now we know as Gentiles, Jesus came and he was the sacrifice, right? Yes. right. He, was, he was that sacrifice. We don't have to go building altars to make a... A sacrifice anymore. It was done once for all. The blood was shed. Right? right. Okay, but understand something. Inside of you, there better be an altar. Yes. There better be a place where the kingdom of heaven is. Something's happening. In fact, Romans 12, 1 and 2, we all know it. What's it say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your body a living Holy, acceptable unto God, which is reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. All right, there's got to be something on that altar. In fact, in Leviticus, it says, don't let the fire on the altar go out. And all this is a type and shadow of what's coming. We are that which goes on the altar that the fire burns, right? right. Somewhere there's got to be change. So let me ask you tonight, in that altar and in that burning... How well do you like the smell of flesh burning? 
And I don't mean in the natural. I mean in the realm of what God's doing on the inside of you. When's the last time you said, oh, I like it because I'm changing? But yet, we want to pray, God, conforming to your image. We go to prayer meetings and we get all froggy and we pray things like, God, whatever it takes, I want to be like you. I just want to be like Jesus on that day. And then when the pressure comes and the heartache comes and he's trying to make you like him. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me tonight? Yes. Yes. See, there's something on an altar. There's got to be a sacrifice. Now, when it comes to the forgiveness of sin and all that, Jesus was the sacrifice. But when it comes to pleasing Him, you've got to be that sacrifice. Amen. You've got to come to Him, and He's going to give you life so you can die again. Get on the altar. So you can go away so that Christ can live. What did, what did John say? Oh, that I would decrease, decrease and that He would increase. increase. Right? Look over to 1 Samuel. Now we're going to change. We've been talking about altar real quick. And we're going to start talking about a different subject called obedience. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. And hopefully we read these verses to refresh us on this. Because these verses here can, can be a little uh, aggressive, if you will, mm -hmm. in our culture of today. Look at verse 22. So Samuel says, who is, who's he talking to? King Saul, right? Has the Lord... As great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. I want you to catch this verse right here. Does the Lord delight in burnt sacrifices and in offerings and altars and all this other as much as in obedience? Behold, what does he say? To do what? To obey is better than what? Than that which is on the altar. To the whole point of Abraham and Noah and Moses and all these other guys, they were building an altar. They were building somewhere to sacrifice unto God. But what we don't catch is they were obedient before they ever did the sacrifice. Yes, right. yeah. We want to have a sacrifice without obedience. Mm -hmm. And it don't work. Because right here, Saul, King Saul had the kingdom ripped out from under him because he had a sacrifice, but there was no obedience with the sacrifice. And God came in and ripped the kingdom out from him because he had been in disobedience. Mm -hmm. right. Right? right? See, we want to talk about authority, and we're going to talk about authority here just shortly. But I want to tell you, in order to walk in authority, you've got to walk in obedience because you'll never walk in authority if you don't walk in obedience. Right. Obedience is the key to the whole thing. See, before there was law, there was an altar. The first man that killed another man, what was it over? An altar. What was it over? And today, what do religions kill each other over? An altar. What do churches sacrifice each other over? Altars. Well, our church is better. Our this, our that, our this, our that, our pastor, our whatever your altar is, whatever you've put up in a place. And let me tell you something I'm telling you right now. The, the prophet says to the king, your, obedient, your, your obedience is more important than that which you offered up. Because you were not obedient in utterly destroying the Amalekites. Your kingdom is ripped out from under you this day. And it is given to another who will, who will seek God, who will do what's in the heart of God. You know what God's looking for right now? It's not eloquent preachers. It's not even that when it's, it's got more gifts and more anointing and more and more. It's somebody that will be obedient. Right. Right. Well, the world's just needing love. Well, love will come through obedience. Mm -hmm. You're going to love people if you're obedient. Because I'm telling you tonight that it was not the will of God... Now, hear me, hear me, hear me. It was not the will of God for there to be law. It was the will of God for him to lead you. That's how it started. I will put my spirit in them. I will write my law in their heart. I will lead them. But yet a people came along... And who wanted to walk in obedience, serve other gods, and he gave a law. And to Moses, the whole point of the law was to bring us back to you can't do it. Mm -hmm. 
That's what Paul said. You cannot do it. The whole point was for restoration to come through Jesus, who brings us back to relationship with the Father, who a guy, look, it's this simple. I, this verse has often, my, my whole life has often intrigued me, and this week, in fasting and praying, man, it just dropped in me, and it just made sense all of a sudden. You got this guy named Enoch who was before law, before all these other things, this guy named Enoch. And what is Enoch known for? He walked, he walked with God and he was no more for God. Took him. No law, no, no nothing. What was he doing? He was walking in obedience. Because in my mind's eye, you know, reading the picture Bible, I read that thing through. I, I've got to go back and look to try to remember. One, one summer, I read that thing through a ridiculous number of times in a summer. Picture Bible. I'm a picture kind of guy. It's easy for me. Right? Bob, some of us are picture kind of people, aren't we? <laughs> well, in my mind's eye, reading the picture Bible, and you got Enoch walking with God, I see him as walking with God. And in my mind's eye, that's how it's been for 47 years. Almost. This year will be 47. I'm stretching it. Okay? In my mind's eye, but you know what it means? He walked in obedience to what God said. He walked with him. You know, and we'll read it if we can later. If not, Galatians 5 and Romans 8 talks about the sons of God are led by the Spirit, Spirit of God. And those who are walking in the Spirit are walking by, in relationship, are walking by the Spirit of God. It's all about Him in relationship and leading me. I will fulfill the Ten Commandments because that's what he, he's not going to let me walk into adultery. I'm not going to take his name in vain. I'm not going to covet my, my neighbors. I'm not going to do all of these things. I'm going to keep the Sabbath holy because he's the one instructing me, guiding me. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. See, it's, it's about obedience and Saul missed it and the kingdom was ripped out from under him and Samuel takes it a step further and he says, does the Lord really delight in these burnt offerings? Does he really? I mean, what are you going to offer him? Then another one of the prophets talks about, does he want another bullock? Does he want another ram? How much more fat does he want? In my words, that's what he's saying. How much more does he want? He wants you. Yeah. And what he wants is, here am I, use me, speak to me, I will do whatever you say, do. If that means in, in the things of the natural, taking a step back and everybody really ridiculing me, then that's what I'm going to do. If it means in the natural, shutting my business down, then that's what I'm going to do. If that's what the Spirit of God says, I may have a multi-million, billion dollar industry business, I may own Amazon. I don't. Just say I know. I don't. But if I did, and God told me today, shut it down. What do I got to do? Not sell it. Because we would go, well, we'll just sell it. That's not what he said. He said shut it down. What do I have to do? Obedience. But but Jesus, teacher, I have kept all these things since I'm my youth. And what thing lacks? What's got you? Because that's what he's after. Is whatever's got your heart. Because yes. he wants fullness. Of, he wants complete obedience. Because we know what this scripture right here says. Does he desire and burn offering? Then what is it going to say? What about witchcraft? Rebellion, verse 23. Is as what? Witchcraft. See, we think of witchcraft as some cauldron somewhere in these these hooded little hat standing around. <laughs> and that can be. Can be. Something similar. When you meet a real witch, sometimes they look like that stuff. They really do. Sometimes they sometimes they eccentric people in warlocks and stuff. And they, they out there. And, and they are walking in some authority and power. They are. I'm not taking anything away from them. I am not challenging them right now. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just saying... When I am in rebellion to God, I'm as a witch in the eye of a God. Mm -hmm. yes. Rebellion can be something as simple as, I want you to shut that door. Well, I ain't doing it. 
I don't like what that's going on. I think they need to be hearing everything. But God said, but we as a church people go, but they need to hear. Now we're going to offend them because they were being loud and, and now it, it looks as if we're just trying to cut them off so that we're not distracted. What if God said shut the door? And it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with me being obedient to God saying, shut the door. Right. Well, they're going to be offended. I can't do anything about that. Right. I've got to be obedient to what God says do and don't worry about who's offended. Because yeah. we live in a day today where, you know, you can't say that because it'll offend people. Yeah. Then die and let them go to hell. Right. And now you stand before God and give account for your lack of obedience. Mm. But what if they get mad? What if you're obedient? Mm. I'm not worried about you getting mad at me. Because some of us may get mad here in a minute where we're headed. And it's okay. I don't really care. <laughs> Y'all look that. I look like I'm concerned. <laughs> Please don't get mad at me. <laughs> and look, I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything. I'm not. But I was serving Jesus before I knew you. Right. And I'm going to keep serving Jesus. Yes. And you, most of you were serving Jesus before you knew me. Yes. And you're going to keep serving Jesus, aren't you? Yes. So how are we going to do it? In full obedience. Because mm. we don't want to be as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. What happens? He has rejected you from being Jesus, right? Mm. Over what? A lack of obedience. The same thing we've been trying to instill in our kids since they were this age. What, what, what thing have we been working on in our kids and in our whatever around us? What one thing have we been trying to do? Obedience. What's the one thing God's been working on you forever? Is what? Because it matters. Yes, it does. It matters. I have set my kids down time and time again, and I have explained why obedience matters. And you don't get the right to ask why. The why is, I'm going to pull the redneck answer, because I said so. Because <laughs> how many of us daddies have said that, or mamas? I've said it. That's why you're going to do it, because I'm the daddy, and that's what you're going to do, because you're the kid. Well, it's deeper than that. It's a reflection of obedience to God. Let's be real right here. Where did sin come into the garden? When a woman, and I'm not picking on women, but it was a woman, it was, just, it was says, I'm not going to honor the word of my husband. Mm -hmm. See, I said some of y'all would get offended at me. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. When a, the woman says, Maybe he don't know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe God don't know what he's talking about because mm -hmm. Adam was the authority represented from God mm -hmm. to his wife. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. And the devil came and challenged the authority of the head of the house, Adam, who was a reflection of God. So let's, let's back it up. When Titus is disobedient to his dad, who's he really disobedient to? God. God. When Titus lies to daddy, who's he really lying to? Because I'm just a representation. I'm just a go-between at this point. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Obedience. How important is it? Most important thing in your life. How much complete obedience? To whatever God says. Whatever that may be. Because, you know, you know the, the stories and the examples, you know, of a kid by the water and the daddy looks at it and says, stop. And he's whining, he keeps moving and then a snake bites him and he dies. Mm. Or a kid running out in the road. Or whatever story you want to say here, right? How important is obedience? Sometimes it's life mm -hmm. or death. Yes. You know, and y'all have heard me say it before, when you're in the nation... Where, where, you know, they're hunting you, they're trying to kill you, and, and, you know, there's ways to get to where you're going, and a couple of the ways they're waiting to kill you, but there is a way open, 
And only God knows, so we got to pray and figure out which way that is. Mm -hmm. Am I asking you which way we going? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Then what you're telling me is, is you're not walking in obedience. And I'm not pointing fingers at you, I'm just saying. If we don't live a lifestyle of complete hearing and obedience to God, it's going to show up in a minute and it very well may cost you your life. Because, yeah. I mean, let's let's be real. How many of us have gotten in our vehicles and went to turn out of your driveway and you can go either way? Y'all live uptown, you can go to, you know, you headed to Walmart, Dollar General, you can go 50 different directions and God says, don't go that way, go that way. Why? Because that's what you're going to do. Why? Because you're going to be obedient. Why? Why? It don't matter. Why? The why is, yes, Dude, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, King Jesus. Yes. yes, King Jesus. I don't have to know why. All I have to know is, yes, Lordship of Heaven. Because, see, we don't often understand Lordship. He's the King of all kings. And He's the Lord of how many? Of everything. And if He takes the time to tell you something, it matters. If He tells you, hold your tongue, Roger. How important is Roger? Is it for him not to explode and to say his point of view? And when I just want to get angry and I just want to be quiet, because God said, "Be still and know that I am." And you know how easy this is for us to walk this stuff out when they're not persecuting us. Well, but brother, you didn't know. You're not in Afghanistan right now. And they're not filleting you out on the streets right now. Are you? We're worried about getting together and worshiping God because COVID may be there. Man, we're suffering. But what if we die? Then we die. I'm going to worship Jesus. Amen. If he's not big enough to, to keep us, then I'm going to go on anyway. That makes sense. Yes, I'm going to worship. I'm going to do. I'm going to call out. I'm going to worship King Jesus because I'm telling you, He's worthy. But do you know how many men and women have given their life on this same thing of obedience? How many people? Well, if you just obey, how many people have told me and my family? Well, you know, He's on the Lord's mission. God's going to get him back home. He'll be okay. What if it's the will of God to die? What if it's the will of God to lose your fingernails and your back to be furrowed? What if it is the will of God to go and hang on a cross? Yet not my will. Jesus did not want to do it. It is very evident. He is sweating drops of blood in the garden. He don't got, Father, if there's any way. And I know how it's recorded, but I know how we talk. I am quite certain he wasn't standing there kneeled over a rock. My father, let's talk. You know, they're coming to take me to kill me tonight. You know, if there's any way to get me out of this, could you do it? Yeah, you know, not what I want to do, but whatever you want to do, I'm all in. That is not how it went down. Mm -hmm. He is vehemently shaking. Mm -hmm. Hematidrosis is taking place. His capillaries are busting. He's mm -hmm. in a violent state. Mm -hmm. I am quite certain when he comes over to Peter, James, and John, and he looks at them, he wasn't, hey guys. You know, we're buddies, we're friends. You were praying for a little while? Hey, hey, guys, I'm going to be in the prayer room Friday night. Y'all want to pray a couple hours together? You know, if not, it's cool, you know. You know what I'm that is not how he approached that. No. I am quite certain. He, he, he has got blood dripping off of him at this point. His clothes are stained. He is a whole lot of things. And he's looking at them. And you know how people, you, when your eyes, I'm just telling you, it wasn't a, hey, I'm sorry to bother y'all. Would y'all mind praying with me? I'm really going through something over here. No! That is not how it went down. <laughs> and he goes back over a stone throat. And he's getting it. And they still sleeping through his hollering over there. Because I'm quite certain he wasn't just mildly talking to the father about this situation. <laughs> this is... Let's talk about this again. 
We talked about it an hour ago because it said about an hour had passed. We talked about it a minute ago, but look, let's go through this again. Is there any way? Do you come up with anything? And he's shaking. He's, but what did he do? Is it your will? I'm going to walk it out. Do you all know it was the will of God for him to die? Yes. <laughs> Let me throw a curveball at you. Go read it. I just read it. Do you all know it was the will of God for Joseph to be sold into slavery? Yes. I just read it. Yes. He tells his brothers, God was ahead of you. He put me here. He saw this coming. If you hadn't, I wouldn't be here. That goes against our American be blessed way of thinking. Everything's going to be great. Just come to Jesus and you ain't got to worry about nothing else. You'll have houses and lands and bank accounts. It's going to be okay. Everybody just take up an offering. That is not the gospel. The gospel is give it away. The ends come and lay up treasure somewhere else. That's the gospel. The gospel is you got to die so he can live. The gospel is what is your will? That's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing completely. What is that? Well, I just don't know how you do it. I just don't know how y'all, because it's called obedience. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to do it. It's obedience. Well, how can you go help these many people? How, how can you just give? How can y'all give that stuff? How can you buy these beers and give them away? How are you going to do all this? Because it's the will of God. If God says do it, then that's his will. Period. What is my part in it? Walk it out. I didn't say it was good to the flesh. When I am in the middle of a fast, so I do things purposely that my flesh do not like. I drink coffee at times. I hate coffee. And I drink it on purpose at times. I'll drink some hot tea just because I don't like it. Why? Death to me. I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, what, what happens is when you're not eating, the taste is just, you, you know, when you eat stuff, all those spices and things, you take it for granted. That gumbo, I guarantee you, has got some stuff in it. Probably got some dish rags and some, I'm just saying, you know, he put whatever, whatever he put in there, and it's going to have some taste to it, right? If it don't, what do we do? Mr. Bob, we got to do something about this. Need some of this and some more of that. Till what happens? An aroma starts and some taste starts, and you like it, don't you? Go ahead, it's okay. Yeah, I like it. I like to eat. It's good. Eating's good. It has its place. You understand something. So does cutting aside and seeking Jesus to hear from heaven. So does be still and know that I am God. So does cut the TV off and listen for a minute. So does cut the radio off and listen. You know how many Americans have trouble with silence? How many of us have trouble with silence? Oh, man, I'm glad, man. My house is so noisy. I didn't like to drive. I, okay, but that's for a minute. And in a minute, you got to have noise. That radio comes on or the telephone or the something. you got to have that... You know how much of that distraction keeps us from walking out with God? Mm -hmm. I got my couple verses. Let's go. Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. Look at verse 8 and 9. Though he was a son, Jesus, yet he learned what? Obedience. Obedience by the things he... <laughs> having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who... Well, I pray the prayer, you know, Jesus is my Lord. Not if you don't obey him. Mm -hmm. He might be your Savior, but he ain't your Lord. The Lord tells you what to do. Yes. The Lord tells you what you're going to do when you're going to do it. You're going to go over here, you're going to do this. I'm telling you, he will save you to the uttermost, but you've got to be obedient yes. in everything. Well, how can you get up at 2 a.m. and see God? I just can't do that. i got to have my sleep. So do I. But you know what? My Bible says he will sustain me. Yes. And if he wakes me up and says, come here, I'm going. You can stay in bed. You can sleep. You can do it. That's on you. I don't, I don't care. But don't look at me and go, why is God using him? Are y'all hearing me? 
Because yes, when God is pulling you, you got to respond in complete obedience. Yes. What was was that? Hebrews 5, let's go to Hebrews 13. <laughs> Hebrews 13, look at verse 17. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief that you would be, for that would be unprofitable for you. All right, let's just hit this for a second. This verse right here don't apply to us today. Y'all know that? Because that's how most of the church lives. Who are you to tell me what I can and can't do? Who are you to tell, who are you to tell me that word ain't from God? I know it was. You want to stir somebody up. You let them come at you with, I got a word from God. And then they tell you, you go, that ain't from God. Oh, they leaving the church, buddy. Because you can't receive correction. We live in a time period where everybody wants to leave. We've, we've developed a culture where God's going to use you. And God's going to God's going to, you're going to put you in charge. What if you're never in charge right. of anything? Right. What if you never get a word? What if you just serve him all your days? be happy. It don't say Enoch had a prophecy. It doesn't say Enoch was an apostle, one of the pillars of the church. It just says he walked with God. And God loved him and took him so much that he just took him. Wow, that's what I want to be. Is it really? <coughs> then how come we can't receive correction? How come we live in a time where people can't speak into our lives? Even things like this. Or if I were to tell a wife, you got to submit to your husband. you got to hush and be still and be quiet. Because you can't receive correction. And I'm telling you, if you can't receive it from a man, how are you ever going to receive it from God who's speaking on behalf of God? The man speaking on behalf of God. And most of the time we're just quoting scriptures and we don't want that. Wives, submit yourself. And it also says submit you one to another, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Do y'all realize when you go into a meeting anywhere, I don't care, church, home church, whatever, in a meeting there is a hierarchy of authority already established. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're like a pecking order. Mm -hmm. And when you leave there, you in a different place than the next place you go. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. But when I'm in your home, it's a whole other. You gotta find your place and know your place. Yes. Because I might have authority here, but if I go somewhere else, I'm gonna sit and be quiet and be still because I'm not in authority there. Right. I'm gonna know my place unless the one in authority gives me authority. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophet. In other words, that's First Corinthians uh, twelve or fourteen. It, it, in other words, that whatever the authority is there is subject. Everything else is subject to it, and it can give authority to something else that's operating to speak. The spirits of prophets are subject to the prophet. If I go to Jeff's house, I'm under his authority. Yes. I'm waiting for him to tell me when to speak. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. But yet, we, we get out of here, man. We, we are so offended. When, when do we welcome God? Correct me. When we wake up in the morning, God, correct me. Correct me. I need correcting. My kids do not wake up going, Daddy, correct me. <laughs> they do not. They do not. <laughs> yeah, that. What, do, what do we do we, we run away from correction most of the time don't we yes, yes. Yes, sir. don't we yes. but what did Jesus learn he learned obedience through. I'm telling you what God wants in our life is obedience get the shot don't get the shot be obedient. Hush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the Holy Ghost telling you to do? Then that's what you do. And hush. Yes. Hush. <coughs> you going to do this? You going to do that? Look, I, I, this morning I was headed to, I got in the truck and I just pulled out. I'm headed. I literally got top of the hill and the phone was ringing. I couldn't get to it. I called the brother back. Church up the road, Lapine. I'm preaching tomorrow. I just found out. I'm preaching in the morning and tomorrow night. You got to be ready. 
You've got to be obedient to the Spirit of God. What's the Spirit of God saying? That's what you've got to do. And I'm sitting there, and I'm talking to Brother Donnie on the phone, and he's telling me what's going on, and, 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 and we prayed right there on the phone for Brother Gene, and yada, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm stalling for just a second because I'm listening. The opportunity's there to preach. Well, it's got to be God. He, not necessarily. What if God says don't go? Because here's the thing. What if, what if they got a lot of order of who they called first and they called somebody else before God told them to? Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to call Jimbo over here and he's the one supposed to be preaching and I said yes and I got in the way and stopped what God wanted to do through him. Mm -hmm. And he'd been praying for years. God opened the door somewhere. Just open the door. Here he comes and I got in his way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You got to hear from heaven. I'm sitting there, I'm stalling. I feel the peace of God on it. And I just, yes, sir, I'll be there. What time? What you need me to do? Well, first he asked me if I, if I knew a preacher. And I told him, no, sir, but I, I'll help put out an ad. We can try to find one together. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to know Brother Donnie, though. He's, he's always full of bulls. But obedience. Because just because there's a door doesn't mean it's the door you're supposed to walk through. Job opportunity don't mean that it's God. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It doesn't mean that bad things are happening. But what is the perfect will of God? Mm -hmm. Obedience. Like I say, get the shot. Don't get the shot. Don't argue with me. Follow the will of God. Mm -hmm. Period. Did God tell you to do it? Do it. God did tell you to don't do it. God tell you to do it. Do it. Well, you know the the legal. No. What is the will of God over your life? Mm -hmm. Hush. Are you walking in complete obedience to the best of your ability? Then hush. 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 Hebrews 13. Oh, man. Acts chapter 5. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 27. Oh, 29, oh, 29. <laughs> but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey, obey God rather than... Yes. Look at verse 32. And we are His witnesses to these things, so also is the Holy, Holy Spirit whom God has given to those. Obey. Man, I got the Holy Ghost. Not if you don't obey Jesus, you don't. Yeah. Go preach that one. Yeah. Man, I got to... No, you don't. you full of pride and arrogance. You ain't got nothing but you. Come on. You know how many preachers preach out of their own self, out of their own their own authority, their own or something they used to operate in because we've let pride come up inside of us and now we operate in pride and we get the room worked up and we call it the Holy Ghost. It ain't the Holy Ghost, it's you. It's self it's it's self brought and it look, here's how to know. If, if it's from God, then the love of God's in the room and God's loving on people and it's lasting work that happens. I'm all about being slain in the Spirit. I'm all about the Holy Ghost doing. But if you go down on that floor under the power of the Holy Ghost, you better get up changed. Or it was you. Yes. Something's going on in that individual if it's from God. If it's not, it's you. Now get up and let's go on. Get out of your pride and let's go. You ask my kids. I've done nothing to learn. You get in that stance. Mm -hmm. This foot goes back here, this foot goes forward. Because I'll be watching them. <laughs> you ain't pushing me, sucker. <laughs> I'm in the yeah. head about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. And they'll come to me, and then they'll start saying stuff like rebellion. And, no, it ain't rebellion, brother. Mm -hmm. If it's a God, I ain't going to be able to hold it. Mm -hmm. If it's of God, I'm going to start trembling and I'm gone. Other than that, bring it. <laughs> well, you need to close your eyes and I'm going to look you in the eye. Because <laughs> my Bible says Jesus lifted his eyes to heaven and prayed. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you in the Holy Ghost, me looking at you ain't going to bother it. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Well, you don't offend it. I ain't offending him. He's my best friend. That's right. You might be offending me, but I ain't done it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's Eric. No, it's not. It's not arrogance. No, it's, it's relationship. Right. You've got to know what his heart's beating with. Mm. You've got to know what, what's on his heart today. I'm telling you, the only way to do that is to spend time with him. He didn't walk with God. He was obedient. Period. Oh, goodness. Where are we going to Romans, 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 Romans 5, Romans, Romans 5, 19. Food's here, it'll be, it'll be here about the night. That's the way I read the Bible. Paul preached and went late into the night. So I just have to follow my example. <laughs> Romans 5 19. My wife's giving me that book. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's what? Obedience. Look, people, you know, the saying is people are waiting on your obedience, and that is absolutely true. Somebody needs you to be obedient. Yeah. Somebody needs you to walk with the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs you to do the Spirit of God. I'm going to skip first Peter. Go to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to tell you something right here. Let's move. We talked about altars and obedience. Now let's move. Genesis 1, verse 28. We're going to talk about authority for a minute. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, who's he talking to? Man. Adam and Eve, what's he saying? What are you going to do? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it. All right, here we go. And what are you going to do once you, once you fill it up and there's people everywhere, what are you going to do? You're going to have dominion over what? I keep telling those fish to go in my nets and they're not hearing me. But, but I do have dominion over them because I'm sitting on top of them. Over, over the birds of the air. And over every living thing that moves on the earth. Does y'all's Bible say over every living thing that moves on the earth? Yes, Does y'all's Bible tell you you have dominion? Yes. Does the Bible tell you he gave you dominion? Yes. Look at uh, Mark chapter 4. Let's look at something. Let's get over Mark chapter 4. Look at verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind... And what? Look, and I'm not talking about my wife and I went into a church one time and we were just there visiting. We were, I just felt like God told us to go. We went into the back of the church. We sat down in the back row and a hurricane was coming at the time. And this woman stood up in that church and she gathered herself and she started strutting herself. Didn't she? Oh, it was something. And she stomped that foot. And I command you. She put that finger up. Didn't she? She did. She, what you ain't going to do is you ain't going to cross that. that what, hurricane went straight across. <laughs> <laughs> Never checked up. And I went straight out the door. And we went right out the door as soon as we could. Hmm. You're going to find yourself in places like that at times. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, like I told somebody earlier. You just start praying over your family that none of those seeds that are being thrown find a spot in your heart. That that ground does not find those seeds. Y'all hear me? People be trying to plant stuff all the time. It better yes. be God. So look right here. They feared exceedingly. God, because Jesus has told the wind, be still. Be still. And what did they fear? Because he had authority over what? In the way. Why? Genesis 128 says... Over everything. Ever. How many of us got winds and waves in our lives right now? Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about this. Uh, you know the other story where Jesus is asleep in a boat? Mm -hmm. Remember the story? Mm -hmm. this, this other story right here? What was the will of God? It wasn't for Jesus to rebuke it. It's for them to let him keep sleeping and trust God. Because he, after he got up, he rebuked them because they woke him. Oh, ye of little. Uh, well, what we want to do is we in a storm, we want to speak to it be still so everything goes hunky-dory again. Mm -hmm. What God wants is you to be obedient and hush. Mm -hmm. I'm not being mean. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, yesterday, how many things was it? It was all of a sudden broke. I mean, I found I found a hole in my boat, just random, just a crack. Went all the way across the front of my boat. Well, that far. Mm -hmm. Not that deep. Just 
in my aluminum of my boat. I was out there doing something Titus and I, and I hit something with a flashlight. Ah! Ah! That's not what you want to find. I came in to tell her we found something else outside that was broke. I mean, it was a, our oven went out yesterday. It was one thing after another. Guess what we're going to do? Be obedient. Well, the devil. What if God just wants me to walk in obedience to all this stuff that's thrown at me? What if there's somebody that's supposed to work on this boat that somebody's been praying, God, send somebody that they'll listen to? What if I'm that somebody they listen to and it takes my boat being broke to get to that person? That's true. That's true. What if an appliance goes out so Bob can be there to encourage a Methodist minister who used to preach whose wife is dead and is discouraged and wants to give up? Right or wrong, Bob? What if God's wanting to do something amazing and you got to go through a little woo storm to get to the amazing? God, I want a story. Mm -hmm. Careful. Mm -hmm. Careful. Mm -hmm. All those stories over there in Africa, careful. I'm telling you, you don't want to hear about the Montezuma's revenge and all the vomiting and all of the... Oh, it's rough sometimes. You got to go get a story. It's rough. Keith always said it's hard being the guy with all the cool stories. And what he was referring to was the story you got to go through to get that story. Okay? God's wanting to do something. What he's wanting is obedience, but he's giving you authority all over already. Look at Luke chapter 17. Let's look at something real quick. Luke 17... Look at verse 6. I told y'all I had some scriptures. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a... You can say that this mulberry tree be pulled up by the roots, be planted in the sea, and it will... Okay. Why? Because he's giving you authority. That's right. Over how many sicknesses and disease? We've read it before. All. Oh. Oh. Uh-huh. <coughs> he gave you authority over that one too. You know how I know? Everything that is named yeah. has to bow. Everything in his name has got to bow. You've got authority. I'm telling you, it's time for us, the body of Christ. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Look at verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying. Y'all see that? Yes, How much authority does he have? Oh. Oh. What's he want from you? Obedience. Mm -hmm. He's got the authority over you. We won't walk in power. Where's power come from? Obedience to his authority. Here, what I, that's a weighty statement I just made. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore. What are you going to do? You're going to make a disciple of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Is he with you? Yes. yes. How much authority does he have? All, All of it. What's he want from you? To yes. walk in obedience to his authority. And guess what will be there? His power will be there when you get there because you're in obedience to where he says for you to be. Some of us are wondering why we're so powerless. I'm going to ask you are, you, are you in obedience to what he's saying? Are you in full obedience to what he's demanding of his will? To know God. To know God's will and to obey is to be subject to his authority. You want to know him? I'm telling you, Enoch walked with God because he was subject to the authority of God. In order to walk with God, you've got to subject yourself to his authority. You can't come to him and be saved until you first come under his authority. And if you're under his authority, then all sickness, all disease, all infirmity, all... I'm telling you, but you cannot walk in that unless you first are under the authority. Are y'all... Am I making any sense here? Yes. I'm telling you, we want to walk in, we want to... We want all these things, we want to... I'm telling you, trust in God's salvation and obey his authority. You know, God said in his word that in the last day, what's going to increase more and more? Lawlessness. Mm -hmm. What is lawlessness? Rebellion to his authority. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. What God kicked them, what kicked them out of the garden? Rebellion to his authority. Going against what he said to. You know why so many marriages are struggling? Because of rebellion to the authority. We've got this thing flip-flop. We've got, we've got this thing so out of balance. Why are our churches folding up? Because we're not walking in authority because you've got to be in complete obedience. Mm -hmm. Things start well, but somewhere it comes about us more than the Spirit of God. And I'm telling you right now, 
that revival is more about the prayers of the people than it is the preaching of the preacher. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, the preaching is what makes change, but before that can ever happen, there's got to be prayer. It's got to be fought in the spirit before it ever shows up in the natural. Put that in your book and think about it. I'm telling you, there's so much that goes on that unless you bathe it in prayer, how are you going to know what to do unless you're praying? How are you going to know what the will of God is unless you're listening? Right. How are you going to know what to want? How's a daddy going to know how to lead his children? How's a, how, how are you going to walk? I'm telling you, Romans 8, 14. Those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. But I'm a son of God, not if you're not led by His Spirit. Not if you're not walking in obedience to Him. If you're walking in, in, in jealousy and pride and arrogance, you are not led by the Spirit of God. I'm just telling you the word of God. I'm not trying to, to make more out of something than it are than it is. But I'm telling you, we've got to go around and get the divisions out of the body. Get the divisions out of the home. Get the rebellion out of hearts. Because more than your giving, more than your tithe, more than your offering, more than all the rhetoric of religion is obedience. Simple, simple obedience. Simple obedience to the will of God. You can be in obedience, but not know how to be in authority or under authority. Hear what I'm saying? You can be in obedience, but still not be under authority. But you cannot be in authority without submission to obedience. You can be obedient and still not have authority operating in your life because it's out of you. But when obedience to Him comes out of my relation to Him, everything He has is now accessible to me. Because I am where He said be at all times. What you going to do tomorrow, I don't know yet. I think I'm going to get up and go to work and lift a hake them. That's what I think. It's what I've been doing for the past 15 years, but maybe not. Why? Because if God says, be still, I'm going to be still right here. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, my kids are out there in a school, right? That's supposed to be a school of faith. And you got all these hyper, hyper situations there where I'm just trusting God. God told me I'm going to quit my job and just trust Him for the money. And most of them get kicked out. Because He also said if you don't work, you're not going to eat. Mm -hmm. He also said a whole lot of things. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. When God speaks, He's not going to go against His Word. He's not going to go against that which He's already established. He's put His Word and he's given us, I'm telling you, be excited, but be grounded to the authority of God. Don't be flaky and don't be out there somewhere trying to do all this craziness. Be grounded in the word of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I, I often make fun of, of some people. And I say, as I do, I make fun because I believe what they're saying ain't coming from God. But it's like, you know, I'm, I'm wearing this shirt and my boots and, you know, somebody may see me and go, I feel like God's going to call you to Japan because I see you wearing something and, and I see you and I, I, really. What they don't know is I'm reading a book about a man from China. And I actually wore this shirt to honor this man that I'm reading this book about because he wore something very similar. So now it makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you why I do what I do. That's right. I did it to honor a man, not because God told me to. But there are times when God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it because God told me to. Okay? Now, what you've got there in your hand is a candle, right? Yes. Yeah. Y'all trust me? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is what I felt like God told me today. Morning. 
going to do something a little weird and a little different right here. But I'm telling you, I heard from heaven and I'm going to roll with it. Okay. I'm fixing to light this thing, representing the light that Jesus gave me. I'm going to light, and I'm going to light, and y'all light around the room. Okay. Because it comes from heaven. And this is what I want us to do. Because it's the same source, the same light that's in all of us, right? Yes. Okay, but here's what we're going to do. This is you. We used to sing that song, you know, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it what? Shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. Why? Right? Because I'm going to let it shine. We've been talking about authority and obedience tonight. This is you. But this also represents those who went before you who walked in authority and obedience. Because I'm going to show you right here. Guys, I need you when these things are lit to turn those lights out. We're not going to turn them out in there to the kids. I want you to turn that light down. Now, I was warned earlier that these little these little candles, they uh, they don't block all the wax. So watch out for your little fingers. Right, Gary? <laughs> Gary told me he's used one before and it came through that side of that paper and got him on the finger. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize if the wax gets your little finger. Don't sue me, okay? <laughs> Move your finger. <laughs> this represents you. But it also represents those who went before us. It represents those at that corner right. Huh? It represents those who were martyred. It represents those who went and did. Miss Judy, can you possibly reach that light right there? I just want us, just we're not going to mess with that light in there. And I want us to do something right here. And if they online, they're just going to have to bear with us. But see, this light represents you. But it also represents everyone that has gone before you that walked this thing out in obedience. Are y'all understanding me? Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. I'm talking the, the men of God, the women of God who laid down their lives in obedience to that flame. That flame representing the work of God in a life. That flame representing the Spirit of God. Just like the menorah in the in the holy place gave the light to all that was in there. That flame represents God's work in you. It's burning you. It's doing. And myriads of people have gone before us and walked out in complete obedience to their last breath. Are y'all catching me? Yes. But in unison, and in a moment, we're going to blow it out. Because that's how quickly your life is gone. Yes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to honor all those whose light was blown. I mean, on this earth. We know they're still living in heaven. And as soon as we blow it out, watch your eyes, Titus is going to put the top light on because this is what happens when we blow it out. So not yet. What happens is as soon as your flame goes out on this earth, all of a sudden you're in another light that's brighter than this. Are y'all with me? Yeah. I know this is simple, but I'm telling you, let it resonate in you. Let it sink inside of you. Because this represents everything holy that's burning in you. Everything that men, they gave their lives for that flame. Yes. Moses, they, all, they, they saw something coming. And Jesus came and he burned something. He did something inside of us right here. He lit something on the inside of you. He's doing an amazing work. And it may be a small light to some. But I'm telling you together we're lighting this room up, right? Yes. But in the same way, in a moment, we're going to blow this out. Because this earth is going to, we're leaving this. And we're going to do this in remembrance of all of those who went before us, whether they were grandmamas and grandpas or whether they were bishops and deacons and elders that were burned at the stake. Or whether they just laid down and they slept with their fathers like David. It doesn't matter how they went, they went. And their flame on this earth went out. Are y'all with me? Yes. And I want you to know something. As quick as that breath hits your flame and goes out, that is your life. It is but a vapor. Take your light and shine for Jesus. Let, I'm telling you, complete obedience so that those who come after us can look and go, those who came before us lived a life of obedience. 
In the authority of God. Is everybody with me? Everybody make sense? Okay. So now here together in unison, I want you to blow out your candle on the count of three. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Y'all see how quick that light came on? Did y'all see? Because that's to be absent from this is to be with the Lord. And now you are gone. And you're but a memory. The same way we tell stories about men from China. And I wear this to honor this man. It's the same way somebody remembers your grandmother, your grandfather, your somebody, your, your pastor from back when that's now gone to be with Jesus. And what do you say about them? They were a man of God. Yes. They were a, and what are you doing? You're remembering their flame. Guess what? You've got but a short while left and your flame's going to be gone. You better burn. God, we love you tonight and we honor you above all. King Jesus, be glorified in this place. May the lamb that was slain receive his reward. God, we love you and we honor you and we ask you to be glorified in our lives. God, we do. Some nights we submit to your lordship. Yes. We submit to you and we ask you, God, that complete obedience to you is our aim. That where you say we will go, where you send us, we will go. And as the saying goes, what you feed us, we will swallow. So God, we just ask you, use us for your glory. Let us be vessels of honor for your name. Let us be men and women who their last breath was given in a complete obedience to God. Matters not our titles. Matters not the decrees of man, that we, the accolades of man. What matters is we were in obedience to the Spirit of God. So God, I ask you to lead, to guide, and to direct. May you do that which is so amazing in us, with us, and through us. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May the countenance of God radiate upon you and bring you peace. In Jesus' name. God bless us through the next time of fellowship. In Jesus' name. Jesus.